All right, I just want <clears throat> to show you a couple ways you can use your whiteboard. Uh, in this case, I'll be doing using Miro uh, to connect your visual research with your, you know, the writing that you do on strategy. Uh, so um, just connecting here with the instructions with the assignment was to organize your writing with your visual research. So screen captures, maps, photos, so they support each other. And that's on your whiteboard. So I just want to show you a couple ways you can do that in Miro. Miro is pretty powerful. Uh, switching over here to Miro. Um, you can connect your Miro drive, your Miro account to your Google Drive. So that can be a nice way to uh, to place your documents in a whiteboard. Uh, I use it quite a bit in my work, um, but I'll show you a couple ways. So this will be one way. So I'm just going to go over here too. Uh, so I have this uh, strategy document here. I have this strategy document. So it's a PDF, multi-page PDF. So I could just drag this PDF right into Miro. And so that it takes a second to load. Um, so a couple ways you can look at this. So you'll see here that when you click on a multi-page PDF in Miro, that um, it shows here that it's yours. I'm seeing one of 11 pages. I can scroll through these pages like this. I can, the scroller can take a minute to catch up, but once it gets going, it's usually pretty good. So that's one way to scroll through it. Not, uh, not the nicest way to move through a, a document in Miro. So the, um, the best way if you do upload a PDF is to actually expand it. So here you can see right beside this, um, pin, uh, function is an extract pages functions function. So I can just click on this and here where it says extract pages. I'm going to choose all and go ahead and extract it. And again, it can take a minute, but once it's there, it's pretty powerful. You can actually see all the pages. I'm just going to drag this one up here. So they're all in a row. I'm going to, I'm going to delete the multi-page version and I'm just going to display all the pages here is actually really useful to frame each one. So put a frame around it, create frame. Uh, I'd give it no fill just so it's clear what the page is. And I'd call this, you know, be try and be super clear. So it's a strategy document, strategy document. Um, I even like it when you put, uh, some of you guys already do this. I like it when you were really clear with naming things. So you call this your name, uh, you know, and call it. 23, so the year, strategy document. Already I'm getting a lot of information um, when I look at this. So if I look at this in the frame viewer here, select it here, it'll tell me exactly what I'm looking at right there. So super useful to name it really carefully. I would actually probably grab this name and copy it and then re rename each one. So give each one, uh, create a frame around it. Paste, call this two and none. And so if, by naming your frames, it just makes it really easy to read. So to go through like that. So you can actually link to a specific frame. So it becomes much more, it's easier to reference um, different parts of your document when you're sharing it with people. So, you know, setting up, expanding it and setting up frames and going ahead and doing all of them. You know, if you have a spread, you can just click both of them. So I'm just holding the shift key down and create a frame as well. So that, that can, that can be a really nice way to organize your work on your Miro board. This is your creative space. So this is a great place to put all your work and interconnect it all. Again, you know, do the same thing here. Give it no fill. So you can see it's two pages and name it, call it, you know, whatever this is, four or five. Um, so that's your document. I'll show you another way you can upload your document, but if, you're, if you've created a PDF in Word or in Google Docs and you just want to download the, the PDF and place it in your mirror board, um, this is how I want to see it. I want to see it organized in on a whiteboard. And the reason why I want you to use a whiteboard is because again, this is your creative space and you can show connections between things. So here, have some competitor reviews that I've done 
in the past. So this is a, you know, again, an industry example, but I've given you also student examples down here that you can reference. So I'm going to drag this down here, right beside it. And this really forms, you know, sometimes the most important part of branding, which is being different. So distinct. So here, when I talk about anything to do with being different, I can reference specific items in here. So for instance, if in my SWOT, I'm saying that, you know, um, I'm different than the dominant brand. So let's say that the dominant brand, you know, obviously these are very disconnected. You know, this is my research here, and this is a student document. If I was to say that the dominant brand in this category is Tweed and and you know, here under a strength, we're different than Tweed in a very particular way. I can actually just make this really clear and I can just draw a line right here and reference something specific on here about this document and how they're different. So a nice little visual connection. It just kind of brings the document to life. It makes, you know, support, it, it really supports your points really well. So I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, Google Doc. So this was with a PDF here. I'm just going to click on upload and I've connected the two. So I've connected my Google Drive, Google Drive, and you, you can connect CC documents here. I've connected my Google Drive. And so I'm able to go in here and grab a document. So here I'm going to take this proposal, the template that I gave you. I'm going to click on this select. And it does the same thing. It downloads a multi-page document, almost as if it's a PDF except, you know, there's one very cool difference that I'll show you. So here I can do the same thing. You can see here's a multi-page document so I can scroll through them here. You know, one disadvantage of the scrolling thing again is, apart from the fact that it's a little bit slow and doesn't kind of show everything, you know, it's almost like a screen reader. I mean, like a, like an e-reader uh, is that it doesn't save the bookmark. It doesn't save the place. Um, so I can pin one of the pages. Uh, right, I can set it here as the current start one. But if I want to reference multiple pages, I can't do that. I have to, you know, you're forcing me to go back and, you know, scroll to page three, maybe scroll back to page two. But here you can do the same thing. You can expand it. So again, extract pages, select all, extract. And then you, you can delete the original one like that. Um, okay, but one... And the same thing, you know, so if I'm referencing specific items on my whiteboard, I can connect the two. So it's not this, you know, this PDF that's floating around somewhere in space. It's actually uh, linked together to your visual research. And then here, if I go here, so here I have any of these pages, I can double click on it and it actually opens it directly in Google Docs. So I can edit it here. I can call it um festival so i'm gonna call it festival you know rename rename and so it's saved to my drive i can close and so you know this will eventually update here sometimes it takes a second but it updates here so i can make changes to my my google google drive doc and it'll automatically update here so pretty powerful feature um and you know uh if you find that I've given you this feedback in your on your strategy document and you want to do this, if you just want to place your Google Drive document on your mural board and um, update it and go for a higher grade, you're welcome to do that. Um, some of you, I really suggest that you you use your your proposal as a living document that you update as you go through the project. Um, that's the way the industry does it. So this is a strategy document. It actually, you know, as you do more research and as you do visual research, you're going to find more ideas and, you know, you can tweak this document so that those ideas are saved as part of your strategy. Uh, one other thing I want to mention here is this idea of referencing. So in the strategy document, I included this uh, item at the end. So references cite your sources. Um, here in this class, we are using a simplified version of the APA uh, attribution. And, and, you know, I'm not requiring you to do this really strict way of attributing, but it's very powerful. It allows me to see where you get your ideas from 
and support them. So here, last name, first initial, year, title, description, and location. So in this case, it's a student name. It's Mara Campbell. The name of the project is the branding for the Abbotsford Air Show. And what is it? It's a student project. And here's the location of it. This is where I got it from. Uh, so who, when, what, you know, description of what and where. So who, when, what, and where. And the way that you really support it in your work. So here's the references at the end. This is where I know you got your idea from. Some of you guys did something like this. So it's, you know, a really good start. But how do I know, you know, where you're using this in the document? Because you could just go and just, you know, find a bunch of resources and stick them at the end as references. That's not really supporting your work. The way that you support it is you have to reference it as you go through. So here, here's this idea here, this origin story about the Abbotsford Air Show. And here I'm saying where I got it from. So I'm just listing the last name. So the last name of the author. This is where I got it from and go to my references and there it is right there and I can find it right there. So um, if you, again, if you see this feedback on your, on your strategy document and you want to update it and go back and make some improvements, um, again, you're welcome to resubmit this, but uh, like, like regardless, uh, very useful way to support your ideas as you move forward. Uh, thanks for watching this and um, we'll see you on the next one.